Hey everybody, welcome back. This is part two of my zipper tutorial. And on this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make these individual threaded um, lines so you can make open zippers. So in the last tutorial, I showed you how to get this far. And I told you it was going to be really important for you to save all of those layers down there, and it is. So I'm going to hide my teeth and my zipper pull for right now because they're in our way. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to all of these individual teeth that I have, and I'm going to just hide every other one. Oops. Because we did them in order, so this is going to... If you could, if I could figure out what every other one was, that would be good. Um, so if you hide every other one, you're gonna get all of your zipper open, just like that. Oops, I missed one. See? Oh my goodness. Harder said than done, right? Or easier said than done. Gosh, I'm all backwards today, everything. Okay, so now you can see that I have one set of zipper teeth right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy all of those. And it'll only copy the ones that are visible, which is a nice little feature. So duplicate layers. And then I'm going to merge those together and pull them up here out of that group and then I'll hide that group again. So there's my individual teeth. I'm going to hide that set of fabric because I don't need it and I'm going to duplicate this set and then I'm going to merge that set and my zipper teeth together. So you can see we have one set of teeth. I'm going to come down and I'm going to trim this up just a bit with my um, selector tool just so I get a nice straight line at the top and at the bottom and I'm going to give myself a little bit of room to work at the bottom. Okay, So let's grab that and pull it over here and I will make everything visible once again so we can see what we're doing. So there is my um, my zipper that we started with and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy and I'm just going to line it up just like that on top and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to line it up on this side as well and since they're the same size because we duplicated everything they're going to line up beautifully and then if you guys are using CS5 or better, which is what I use, I get that asked so much what version of Photoshop you use. I use CS5. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use Puppet Warp and I'm going to pin right here and then pull it open just like that. And you can see how easy that works. And then of course when you get done doing that side you can come over here and use Puppet Warp again to do the other side. Now it's a little bit trickier if you guys don't have um, Puppet Warp or CS5 or a version that has Puppet Warp. CS6 also has it. Um, if you don't have it then you're going to have to go and actually draw in you know in the right size your fabric and then just take your individual tooth and plug it in and again like I said save in layers because you don't want to have to do this all of the time it's nicer just to have to do it once and then of course you know if you feel like this tooth you want to burn a little shadow over it since it's below the other one you can do that you can add shadows and make this look like it's rippled and then dodge in right here and make it look like it's rippled as well and um, yeah, so lots of capabilities for this. Um, I will sh quickly show you. Let me get these in here because now that I've got one side, of course, I have to do the other. Um, once you get these in here like this, then you can go back and if, again, you have Photoshop that has Puppet Warp capabilities, um, you can, let's, I'm going to just grab a contrasting color. Let's, I'll show you kind of how it would finish if you so desired. So this would be your kind of your fabric layer over it. I'm going to just flip this vertically. F Oops. That did me no good. <laughs> I'm going to flip this vertically like that and pull this on top of everything but the zipper. Just like so. Um, personally, you guys know my love for the bevel and emboss and stuff, so I'm going to make this look rounded by going to inner glue and getting out the black, changing my blending mode to multiply and making it a little bit bigger so we get a nice rounded effect like that. 
And then you would just take and duplicate this layer, of course. And then edit Puppet Warp. Pen here, 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 and uh, start pulling this guy over like so. And then this one below it, I'm going to do the same thing with and just pull it over. I was a little bit messy down at the bottom, but for the sake of time, I'm going to leave it there and not go back and fix it. But this one I'll be a little bit neater on. Oops. So you do that. And then, of course, you can match your dodge and your burn that you've got going on up here to make it look like a cohesive unit. And that is how I do it. Then, of course, um, I say of course, but maybe it's not intuitive. Your fabric layer then would be like my favorite, other favorite tools, the polygonal lasso tool, would be over here like this. And then this would be your um, fabric layer, like that. Oh, my goodness, I was messy again. Okay, so just like that. And that's your fabric layer. So that's that's the zipper you guys see, like the total breakdown of it and how it's completed and made. Um, you know, and again, don't you can always dodge and burn everything through here to match with wrinkles and whatnot. So that's it. As always, if you have questions, don't be afraid to leave me comments. Don't be afraid to subscribe to my channel. I am always happy to answer questions. Feel free to shoot me an email. Um, more tutorials coming very soon. Save as your PSD file for this guy because you only want to make this once or twice. Like You don't want to have to do this all the time. So be sure to save in layers. And don't forget, you can change colors on this really easy with your adjustments channel. I'll show you really quickly just like that. You'll see rainbow of colors and if you only want to affect the layer below you, you just click the sky right here and it only affects the immediate layer below it. So there's that. Enjoy um, and thank you so much for watching.